Vehicle is lifted. Engine is supported. Negative cable is disconnected. The transmission side of the clutch cable I had to scoot this rubber boot back. Put the vice grips on one side of the cable. And that nut, if you have a deep well socket, 14 millimeter, that's perfect, but I don't have one of those. So I'm using a regular 14 millimeter socket and I have a 9 16th wrench. I need to remove this nut and pull the cable out. It's unbolted, so just pull this back, pop it out the side, be careful. In order to pop it out of there, I had to back, uh, move it towards the front of the car and then pull it out sideways to get it past that knob. And as a helpful hint, I always put the hardware back on to wherever it came off of so the, the washer, the spring, and, and the nut don't get lost. The spring tried to disappear on me, so it's, I had to go hunt it down. But up there is a, where it's hooked in, unhook it there, unhook it move it out of the way of the transmission. Center console. There's screws on each side. I've already pulled those. Move the boot from on top under, to underneath. And then pull up. Okay, center console's out of the way. Now the bolts. Remove the bolts for the center console bracket and remove that out of the way. The bracket's out of the way. This is the inner boot. Pull the inner boot out of the way. And the instructions say to push down and rotate counterclockwise. I'm supposed to push down on the gear shift control case cover. Shift your case cover right there. Pushed it down really hard. Turned it counterclockwise. And it looks like maybe an eighth of a quarter of a turn and it popped out. So now the shift lever should come out. Shifter's removed. It doesn't look like there's any excess wear. Nothing bad at least. I'm covering it to protect it. It's probably best to use plastic, but at least I can take this and burn it rather than fill a landfill with it. Can't really clean all the grease off the plastic and recycle it. Remove the upper and the lower drain plug of the transmission with a drain pan below it. Next, I'm going to remove the speedometer cable. Next, I need to disconnect the breather hose and the wiring harness clamp. Now, the breather hose is at the back of the engine, it's sitting on top of the transmission, and I followed it through and I found it right there. The instructions say it's at the rear of the cylinder head, that little yellow clip in, in the dead center. It should just pop right out of that. And I've had to replace this before. It's the reverse light sensor, that little white connector right there. It's sitting on top of the transmission. As far as I can tell, it's the only wire going to the transmission aside from the ground wire in the back. So I believe this is the wiring harness connection it was talking about, which is just a simple clip. Unplug it and it's good. Connectors disconnected and removed the hose from the clamp and tucked it off to the side so it can slide out easy right there in the middle. Next is the starter. Got a little bit of silver you can see at the bottom underneath those two hoses. Well, a little bit to the driver's side of those two hoses. Starter's out. So I put the two bolts back in place so I don't lose them. And it was three wires. Well, two wires. This one stayed on. Okay, that's where the starter was above where the connector's just hanging. And next, I'm removing that cross member. Got the transmission lift strapped onto the transmission. Uh, got pretty tricky. That tie down just wasn't quite right, the right size, so I had to play with it. Hopefully, it'll be easier when you do it. And the cross member is loose. I haven't taken it off yet since it is supporting the tra uh, transmission, and I needed to get the 
jack in place. The speedometer cable's been removed. I need to remove that ground wire before I pull the cross member. And then the drive shaft. And I've marked it so it, I can put it back exactly the way it was. Now I had to move the engine, the engine hoist because it was in the way of me getting the starter out. So I gotta put that back before I take this cross member out. But after that, it's just the cross member, the drive shaft, transmission, transmission engine bolts, and I should be able to pull the transmission out and access the clutch. Cross member's out. And I put some of the bolts back in place so I wouldn't lose them later. The rest of the bolts are back in place as well. They're different sizes, so I didn't want to mix them up. Although the shorter ones go in the middle on the transmission. And I've started on the drive shaft. It's trying to spin on me, so I had to put a wrench on the back, on the nut on the back. And I'm pulling that next. I've left the exhaust system in place because I think I can clear it <coughs> with, with, uh, with the transmission without any problems. I've removed the, the nuts and the bolts for the drive shaft. I left the high one in place, which I can't get the camera at a good angle. So when I knocked it loose, it didn't come crashing down on my head. Which worked out great. So I'm going to pull this. That's that last bolt out. And then pull it straight from the transmission. And I put a drain pan here just in case so there's liquid. And when I say liquid, I mean gear oil. Drive shaft's out. It came out perfectly. There's a little corrosion on some of the bolts, so I'm going to have to replace those. I already scraped out inside the bolt, hole, uh, bolt holes. I uh, wrapped some paper around it to protect the shaft. I went ahead and put one of the bolts back in that top one that I had before so I can remember how it's aligned. Just extra help. Okay, see? Uh, that's where the drive shaft goes. And where it feeds into the transmission, I put some paper over it to keep it, any particulates from getting in there. Just to keep it from getting any further damage. Now, it's kind of tough to see, but that L bracket over there, I took out the two bolts connecting to the transmission. Two 14 millimeters on the passenger side bracket. Uh, I also had two millimeter, or two 14 millimeters on the driver's side, lower, a 17 millimeter um, nut on each side, that one, that third hole up, and there's one up there, which I don't know if I, yeah, there it is, that threaded bolt sticking out, well actually it's not sticking out anymore. Then I had two 17 millimeter uh, bolts on top, and then I also had two 10 millimeters on the flywheel desk cover here. Unfortunately, the reason why I don't like people touching my car besides me is somebody screwed up and I had to grind that one out, so that one took a really long time. And I'm removing the transmission now. I'm having some difficulty. It doesn't slide right out. Uh, the, the transmission jack had, probably has to be adjusted, but I'm not sure up or down, so I'm using a little bit of of pressure with a pry bar and separating it. It's almost out now. I just have maybe a half to a quarter inch left and the transmission will be out. And there's the clutch plate. Transmission's out. Yeah, I had to do a lot of prying. The guide bolts were hanging up a little bit, but they're free. Clutch plate. Transmission. Before you move the transmission, make sure the strap is very tight. It didn't roll on my head, so that's good. And next is taking that off and replacing it. Here's my originals. There's a groove there. That's, that's from the throw-out bearing. The old and the new. There's nothing really noticeable except for the groove on the clutch plate. That's from the throw-out bearing. These are the new ones. I 
forgot to mention, the clutch plate had six bolts. I believe they were 12 millimeters. Uh, according to the instructions, we're, we're mask because there is concern for asbestos and so obviously wear goggles, some kind of safety glasses. And when you are removing it, you want to go, you hit one, but then you don't hit the one next to it. You don't go in a circular pattern. Um, you, you do it slowly, you loosen the bolt just a tiny bit, and then you go crisscross, just like when you're putting on lug nuts on a tire. You don't go in a circle, you go crisscross. That way the pressure is released evenly and there's uh, no, no risk. And then whenever I was removing it, you're supposed to hold it pretty tight and hold, put a, uh, apply pressure and then remove it. But mine was kind of stuck, so I was holding pressure and trying to pull it at the same time. Unfortunately, the disc fell straight out and at the positioning of where my vehicle is right now, I had no choice but to do this from underneath, uh, laying down underneath. And of course, the disc fell straight onto my chest. Fortunately, it's extra padding there, so it could have hurt a lot more otherwise. But landed on my chest, rolled off before I even got my hands off the clutch plate. There's the six bolts. When removing the old clutch, make sure you use the, the alignment tool. The clutch plate will be over the clutch disc. Uh, you insert it so it matches up with the splines here and hold it in place and, uh, until you remove it. That way this doesn't fall on you. I actually forgot that part, which is why it fell on me. And then when you install the new one, it's the same. The clutch plate goes over the clutch disc. You put this in there to hold the, the disc straight. And then as you're slowly bolting it down in a crisscross pattern on the bolts on the clutch plate, you keep rotating this to make sure it still moves freely and it hasn't misaligned. And this goes into the, the pilot bearing slot, and you're supposed to make sure it seats completely as you're installing. Now I have to remove the pilot bearing, and unfortunately the auto parts stores either don't carry it or the one, as in this case, the one I just brought home was too large to fit inside the pilot bearing. So I'm going to have to use what I've been looking up to be the grease method or the bread method. Uh, you cram it packed inside the little hole in there, in the middle of the pilot bearing. You get a bolt or something cylindrical that's just the right width to fit inside of it. You pack it real tight with the grease or the bread, and then you start hammering with the bolt on the, in between, and it pops it out. This is the one that was actually too wide in diameter uh, for the center hole of my pilot bearing. That's the little bitty pilot bearing. It's very small. I think it's smaller than the average. This probably would work for most vehicles, but my vehicle is kind of small, as is everything else. When you discard the old clutch pieces, uh, components, and anything you used on any of it, considering the asbestos issue, um, the, it was advised to put it all together, bag it, and label it, and discard properly. So everything that I have that has anything to do with the clutch parts is going in this box and it's going to be trash. And on a side note, uh, the pilot bearing is, is bad on this vehicle, which um, I check that by rotating it and if it doesn't rotate smoothly, then it's, it, the bearings inside have deteriorated, which it feels like I'm running over popcorn <laughs> whenever I rotate it. I am removing the pilot bearing from the engine side of my clutch, and I'm using bread, <laughs> uh, and it's actually working. So you stuff this thing full, try and f make sure there's no air pockets, you use a bolt that's about the same size as the hole in the center, and keep packing it. And then as you're working, you, um, of course this doesn't stay here, I'm cramming more in here, um, as you're working it, Working through it, you keep shoving the, the bolt, packing it in more, and hammer it. And it's actually working. It's moved out. Uh, it looks like it's almost halfway. So I 